Hello everyone, my name is Laura and this is my husband JJ and we are excited to be with you today. Yeah, we, we're just honored that you decided to take this time and join us on this Easter Sunday and really our first ever service <laughs> online and anywhere. So we're just excited um, that you've joined us today at Thrive Church and our prayer is that you would be uh, inspired and encouraged by today's online worship experience. So sit back, relax, and come along with us on this journey we call Thrive Church.
because you go before us. You are for us and not against us. And no matter what happens and what we may face, you are always there. And we thank you. Thank you.
that peace that surpasses all understanding. You show us that in the midst of darkness, that even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it, you are always there. And you make a way. When we think that there is no way, you make a way. For you say you are doing something new. And you are making a way where there was no way. So we trust and believe in you, Lord. And we surrender our lives to you, knowing that you are in control. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hello, everybody. Happy Easter or better off and better stated, happy Resurrection Day. As we stated, we are excited that you're joining us today. Um, I've got my beautiful wife here and our lovely friend, somebody very special to us today. Kizzy's in the house, and we know you're in your house, so enjoy this message. We want to take this time, really, to answer every single one of their questions at home about what's going on in the world. Yeah, yeah, right. That's not going to happen, okay? But we do want to invite you guys into this opportunity that we're going to have this conversation today and share a message with you about how you can step into the new in this season of your life. Because if you haven't realized, the world is kind of upside down. There's a whole lot of craziness going on right now, and uh, everything is changing. Uh, you know, people lost their minds. Yeah, they can't find toilet paper anywhere. People have lost their minds. At the time that we were recording this, we're right in the middle of the coronavirus thing going on right now, and the whole world basically shut down. I never thought in my lifetime I would see the entire world shut down. And if we're honest and if we're real, the truth is that once the world gets turned back on, the reality is things are probably not going to be the same that they were before we jumped into this uh, season. And um, I just really believe that this is a unique moment in history. It's a, it's a time where we've got to learn how to flow in this season and how to move into the next season. And today's message, our inaugural message, is really just called Into the New. And um, I want to share with you guys how we can take unique moments of our lives and just step into the new of your life. Because oftentimes there are moments that will pass us by. And we've got to understand that when God's got a plan for us in the moment, we need to take advantage of that plan in the moment in order to get where God wants us to go. So if you're ready, get out your notes. I'm going to take some notes and I'm going to share a message with you. Um, because we're doing this thing uh, on this recording, I want you guys to know that we're going to put all the verses in the recording below, uh, in the messages below, so you guys can follow along that way. But feel free to join up with us. So... First thing I want to tell you guys, how do we step into the new in our lives? It's real simple. We've got to recognize the new. How many of you understand that? If you don't know that something is new, that something's an opportunity, there is no way that you can step into that new. So the first thing I want to share with you, we have to recognize the new, okay? And in order for me to illustrate this point, I want to go to a story that's probably very familiar to most of you, and, and, and maybe it's not, but... It's the story of Moses and the people of Israel, okay? It's Sunday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, but a couple days ago, it was the Jewish celebration of Passover, which is very significant to us as well, and that's the story I want to read from really quick. Just take a, a snippet out of there to see how these people recognized a unique time and a unique moment and how they responded to that moment. So here's the context, right? The context thought is that the people of Israel... They're slaves for like 400 years, okay? They're going about their day-to-day. -day. Um, they're, they're clearly not living their best life, okay? And we get to a point where God has a conversation with Moses, and God lets Moses know that he's seen the people and he's seen their struggle. He knows where they're at. I want to stop for a moment just to let you know that as you're listening to this, God knows exactly where you're at right now. Make no mistake about it. I'm going to go into this a little bit later, but make no mistake about it. God knows exactly where you are right now and in this very moment. And he knew where they were at 
at that time. That's why he called Moses. He says, Moses, I want you to set my people free. He's seen the struggles. He's seen the issues. He's seen what they've been going through. And he called Moses at a particular time in history to set his people free. So what did Moses do? Moses went to Pharaoh, the leader of the time, and he started talking to him and pleading his case. He started telling the Pharaoh, listen, my people, we've got to go. We've got to get out. We've got to worship. And uh, Moses was not having it. <laughs> Moses was not letting them go. Okay, Moses like, not going to go. That's my workforce. My people need to be working. You can't go. But Moses insisted. And, and, and God sent forth plagues, sent forth situations to convince Pharaoh to do what he needed to do, which was to let the people go. And um, we get to this part in the story where we're going to read, which was basically the last of the plays it, it's it's that moment where everybody the people of israel had an opportunity they had a unique moment okay god was about to do something he was about to shake something up and the people had to respond rightly at the right moment to have their salvation so so here's where we're at in exodus chapter 12 verse 21 to 24 as god was uh, revealing his plan to set the people free god gave moses an instruction and God's instruction to Moses was this. He says, on that same night, the night that God was going to put forth uh, the, the destruction to basically convince Pharaoh that it was time to let the people go, on that same night, the Passover night, the shake-up night, if we want to call it that, he said, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. And the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is that famous story where God uh, gave the instructions to Moses, and he told Moses, you know, go get the blood of the lamb or the animal, put it on the doorpost and on the top of the door, and then when I see that, that's going to be my sign to not touch that home, to not go into that place, so that everybody who is in that place will be saved. That was the instruction that God gave to, moment, to Moses. And that was a moment that they had to respond to. So then we see that Moses goes and gives that instruction to the people. But not just instruction, Moses was giving them an opportunity. He says in verse 21, that then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. This is Moses now talking to the people. He says, take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning. And when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over the doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Did you guys get the story? Here's what happened. Moses came to them and he told them, he says, something bad's about to go down. But what looks bad is really for our good. Have you ever felt like you're in that position that you're going through something really bad to later find out that maybe it was working for your good? This is a great moment in history to step into that opportunity. We're going to talk about that. So something bad was about to go down, okay? But God was giving them the instructions and he was giving them the warning so that they could follow the instructions. What were the instructions? Real simple. He says, let none of you leave your house. How long you been in quarantine? <laughs> I'm just, you know, let none of you leave the house. What was the point of going into quarantine in the first place, right? So that none of us would be affected by what's going on in the world. In this particular case, Moses was giving the instruction. God said, don't let them go. Don't go out of the house. It was a specific instruction to stay at home. They had stay at home orders back in the day. Didn't come with now. So, and then the instruction was to cover your doorpost with the sacrificial blood as a sign. Okay. And they were given a choice, right? Because they were given instructions. But how many of us can agree that every time we're given an instruction, we really are faced with a choice. They were given an instruction and therefore they were faced with a choice. The choice here was, hey, life or death. <laughs> like we're, we're either going to get past this thing or we're going to die. Okay, that's it's like real simple choice, but that's what they were faced with. And, and if they made it past the night, they would be released. 
okay, they would be set free. They would be able to walk into a new season, into a new freedom, okay, into something that these people had never known before. See, these people were 400 years, generations enslaved. So this particular generation had never seen freedom like this before. Uh, most of us, we've never seen like what we're going through in the world like this before. That's for sure. But I got to tell you that once we get out of this time, because there's going to be a time where you're going to leave your doors, you're going to get out of quarantine, okay, and the instructions and the opportunity that you have in front of you, you're going to either be able to walk in it or not walk in it, depending on the decisions that you make. And so here's they, they had an opportunity to walk into a new freedom. And all they had to do, how many of you guys understand that sometimes all we have to do is harder than saying. It's easier said than done. And all they had to do was step into the new opportunity. So in order for us to understand how we step into new opportunity, we need to understand the ingredients of opportunity, okay? All throughout scripture, God will use certain words. Um, if, we, if we look to the original words of what God uses in his scripture, there's two words specifically that he uses. It's called the Moads and the Kairos of God. Don't get lost. I know that sounds fancy. But all that means, the Moads and the Kairos of God, is that there are moments in time when the conditions are specifically right. They're just right for a, a particular cause of action or a course of action. In other words, there are times throughout Scripture where we see that God sets up moments for specific things to happen. And as we were preparing this service for you, I really believe that God put upon my heart to share with you that right now is one of those times that this is a moment in history where you can make a decision to step into something new or stay in the old. But the fact that you're listening right now tells me that God already has a plan for you to step into something new. But I digress. Let's go back to the ingredients of an opportunity because we have to understand that. The first ingredient of an opportunity is awareness. Okay, You have to be aware of the opportunity. You have to identify the opportunity in front of you. And if we're honest with each other, sometimes the opportunity is right in front of you and you didn't see it. You've been staring at it for a long time, but you still don't recognize it's there. Okay? Uh, that new business, right? Maybe in this last season, maybe you lost your job, but for a long time you've had this business on your heart. You've been wanting to, to, to do it. You've been wanting to launch it. It's been stirring up. It's keeping you up at night. You might even have a draft of the business plan all ready to go. But then you lose your job, and the opportunity is staring you right in the face, and now is the time to launch that business. But for whatever reason, we choose not to. That was a moment that we might have missed. So we have to understand that in order for us to step into the new, and when we talk about new, we're talking about opportunities. In order for us to do that, we have to have an awareness of the opportunity. Just like Moses told the people, here's what's about to go down, right? So we have to aware, be aware of the opportunity. Uh, sometimes it's not right in front of your face. Sometimes it's more like a whisper. Have you ever been in a situation where you just know, and you know, and you keep hearing that thing speaking to you and you just can't stop hearing it? Something that, that you need to do, something that you need to adjust, something that you need to change. It's important for us to listen to that whisper so that we can be aware of the opportunity that God is trying to take us into. And sometimes it's not in front of us. Sometimes it's not a whisper that we've got. Sometimes we just have to take a cold, hard look in the mirror and figure out where, in, where am I going in life? I was about to use another word but I'm not going to do that. But where are we going in this life? Okay. Have you ever taken a cold, hard look and just say, you know what? I am, I'm not going to say my age, but I am X amount of years old and I've not gotten to where I need to get to. Let me step back. Let me analyze. Let me look. What opportunity am I missing? Because I might be missing it because I'm not aware of it. Once you become aware of it, then you can appreciate the uniqueness of the opportunity. That's the second point here. It's the uniqueness of every single opportunity. Why? Because, as we said before, there will be times where the opportunity will pass you by. A lot of people will say, oh, don't worry if you believe the opportunity will come back again, and I pray that it does. 
But if we're going to keep it real, there are times where opportunities have passed us by. And we might not get that opportunity back again. Okay? If you think about the story we just read in, in, in Moses, Moses and the people, if, if they would have fallen asleep when Moses gave them the instructions, oh, I'll put the blood on the doors tomorrow, they would have missed their opportunity. They would not have woken up. There would not have been a tomorrow for them because they would have missed the opportunity. Okay, there are times where we have to understand that there is uniqueness about every single opportunity. And when that opportunity comes around and it's unique because we've seen it, okay, we have to understand that it's go time. It's now. You can't, you can't do this tomorrow. When the entire world got shut down, everybody said, you know what, I better get online to be relevant or I will quickly not be around tomorrow. Okay, there are moments where you just have to act and you just have to move on that opportunity, okay? Because there will be times where it will pass you by, all right? So once we understand the awareness of the opportunity, the uniqueness of the opportunity, then we have to have a right response to the opportunity, okay? Every single opportunity that God puts in front of you, it will be uh, possessing the element of awareness. It will be something unique, and there will always be a right response to that opportunity. You want to step into something new, then you have to have a right response to that opportunity, okay? My kids want to step into a happy day. They better have listened to whatever I had shared with them earlier on in that day, or that they might not go well for them, okay? So, but here's the reality. Just like Moses and the people that we read the story from, the blood was the opportunity, okay? But the response was the key. What do I mean by that? Okay, Moses gave them the instruction for the blood. But their response to actually do what needed to be done, that was actually the key. <laughs> it's kind of like when, when my wife said, I do. When my wife said, I do, and I asked her to marry me, that was the opportunity, wasn't it, babe? <laughs> and that was the opportunity when I asked her to marry me. But her I do was the rightful response to set her off into a whole incredible new future. <laughs> Look at the camera, babe. Give me some agreement. <laughs> That's the reality. It was her opportunity to step into a uh, I'm going to sing like a Disney song, whole new world. Yeah, I don't sing, if you didn't know. But that's what it was. It was an opportunity to step into an incredible future. We are, if, if you're just knowing us, if you don't know us, we are this year about to be 18 years happily married. And I'll tell everybody from here to wherever, I love her more today than the day I first married her. So we, we and I know you would agree. <laughs> you don't have a mic, so you can't agree. But so the right response, however, is something that is essential to walk into the new, into the opportunity. OK, um, here, here's the reality. The most right response will always be the one that allows you to depend fully on God. OK, you've got to be aware of the opportunity, understanding that it's unique. And understanding that your right response will fully make all the difference. And the most right response will be that one that allows you to fully depend on God. Okay? So now with, the, with this understanding, now we've recognized the new. But once you know something is new, you have to embrace the new. Okay? It's one thing to, to recognize something is new. But if you don't do anything about it, if you don't embrace it, then it will never be new to you. Okay? So you might be sitting there, why should I embrace the new? Why should, I, why should I make a change? Why should I do something new? Well, I'm trying to tell you that God's plans for you, okay, are good. God's new is always a good new, okay? Jeremiah 29, 11 puts it this way. He says, for, the, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. He says, I've got plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God's new is always a good new says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, he says that godliness, right living, right response to God's opportunities, godliness has value for all things, holding a promise for both the present life and the life to come. See, God's not just considering or concerned about your today. He is, but he's also concerned about what's going to happen in the future. 
He's got promises for you today and for tomorrow. But you might be thinking, but, but why? I like the old. How many of you guys like the old? You guys know what the old is, right? Because you look nervous. The old. We, a lot of times, we like the old. We don't want to step into the new, okay? It's an opportunity to leave certain things behind, okay? Why should we step into the new? Because it is an opportunity to leave certain things behind. There are things in your past that you know you need to leave behind. And you cannot walk freely into your future carrying with you the burdens of your past. You've got to step past that thing that has been holding you back. You've got places to go. If you didn't know, if this is the first time you are hearing this message, you have got places to go. God did not create you. And yes, whether you have a relationship with him today or not, God created you, and God did not create you to remain stuck where you are. He has created you to keep advancing, to keep going forward. We like to call it going from glory to glory. That's part of his promises. So we can't get stuck in the old. How many of you guys remember that movie Matrix? Okay, <laughs> some people who are watching, they've never seen it. Okay, so we might have aged ourselves. But good news, I think there's like a, another one coming up next year. Okay, so it's going to become real relevant for you, all right? But could you imagine if Neo never took the red pill? And end scene. Like, the movie would have ended, like, blue or red. Blue. All right, movie. Credits. Okay. Could you imagine if he did not take the red pill? Okay. If Neo had never taken the red pill, he would never have stepped out into the fullness of his purpose. He would never have been truly woke to his actual reality. That was a decisive moment in his time. If it wasn't fiction, I would say that was a Moed or a Kairos of God. It was a unique moment where he had to be aware that there was an opportunity for him. Okay? It was, in his case, the most decisive time of his life, which allowed him to truly live. You see, if we don't embrace the new, we can't really truly live. Why now? Well, because now is an opportunity for clarity. Okay, now is an opportunity for clarity, specifically at the time we're recording this. Why? We need to take an honest look at ourselves, okay? Unfortunately, taking an honest look at ourselves is sometimes too hard for most of us to do, okay? Because if we're going to take an honest look at ourselves, we're going to find things about ourselves that we don't like. And when we find things about ourselves that we don't like, we have a decision to either react and change or stay and remain. And uh, a lot of us like to, to act a fool when we need to take a hard look at ourselves. You guys remember those three monkeys? We don't want to, don't talk to me about it. I don't want to see it. We're not going to talk about it. It's like those three monkeys. Just because you cover your eyes to a situation that is going on does not mean that that situation disappeared. That's what our five-year-olds do. You can't see me because I don't see you. That's not, <laughs> that's not the way this thing works, okay? I got, I got news for you. I understand it's hard, but we really have to learn to keep it real with ourselves. All right? Let, let me put it this way. As we're living this, this craziness in the world with, with the coronavirus, <laughs> Corona has forced us all to go inside, okay? So Corona removed the distraction to, the, to reveal the dysfunction. I'm going to say that one more time because you didn't hear it the first time. I believe that Corona has removed the distraction to reveal the dysfunction. I'm not saying that that's why Corona came. But if it has removed the distraction, then it's time to deal with the dysfunction. What does that mean? Let's just talk about the household for a second. If your household is even anywhere near as crazy as is mine, my wife and I, we've got four beautiful kids ranging between 9 and 15 years of age. And ever since they have to stay at home, now we've got to see them all the time. <laughs> okay? And I love my kids. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes I feel I'd love them a little bit more if they went back to school and came home after being home all day. Okay? Uh, of course, I'm being uh, funny about this, but the reality is some of you just agreed with what I just said without laughing because you know it's real, 
okay? My wife's a teacher, so she's teaching the, the kids uh, remote online. And your kids are probably having to do this remote learning as well. And it has been just a, a weird time. And I know that frustration has set in. Well, while you're sitting with your family, when, when the distractions have now been removed from our lives because you can't do all the things you used to do. You can't go to the gym to try to get away. You, you can't go to the bar to try to get away. You can't go to your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your lover to try to get away anymore. You got to stay home. And when you stay home and you're spending time now with your family, you're realizing that maybe, just maybe my family's in dysfunction. And you have to face the hard reality that there is a new that you need to embrace to get past where you presently are. So although the distraction has been removed, the dysfunction has been revealed. And we need to learn to face that. Maybe some of you guys in this time, as you're spending this alone time, maybe you're having to face the emptiness of some of your pursuits. Maybe you've been chasing things that you should never have been chasing. And I want to tell you today that God is calling you into something new. That you can stop chasing those things that are not taking you anywhere, but that you can start chasing the future that God has for you. I know because I know that as I speak these words right now, some of you guys are watching this message and some of you guys are thinking, man, I've been searching for something new for way too long and I haven't found it. Well, here is your new. This is your new. The fact that you are connected online on our first ever inaugural service means that God has a message for you. And it's time for you to embrace that new. But you might be saying, but, but I can't. I can't. Why not? I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. Whatever, just, you know, I, oh, I've tried and I can't do it. Here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. If you look at the story of Moses, okay, and you look at the people of the Passover, when Moses gave them the instructions, it did not matter who was behind that door. Let me, I got to stand up for this, okay? It did not matter who was behind that door. You could have been any old fool behind that door. So long as that blood was on the door, you were going to be saved in the morning. It didn't matter if you had failed in business before. It didn't matter if you failed in marriage before. I hate to say that you could have been acting a complete fool behind that door that night, out of your mind, but the fact that you had the sign on your door meant that in the morning you would be saved. We've got to understand that it's not about you being good enough. It's not about where you've been or what you've done. It's about where you are and where you are is right now, right here. Okay? It's not just, uh, it's not just a time for you to, to be lost. It's a time for you to be found. I know that sounds so cliche, but the reality is we're going to step out of these doors at some point. Okay? And if you're watching this message sometime after in a recording later on in life, way after the quarantine, every morning when you get up, you've got to step out of your doors. And as you step out of your doors, you have a decision to make. Okay? Because you've got places to go. Are you going to step into the new? We've got to embrace the new. And it doesn't matter where you've been or who you are right now. God accepts you just the way you are. So we've got to step into that new. We got to step into that new. You ask yourself, what does any of this have to do with Easter Sunday and Resurrection Sunday? Thank you for asking. Because Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, it's an appointed time for you, for you. For you, you, and you, and me to step into something new. See, Jesus is that new. You've been wondering what you've been searching for this whole time. And it's been Jesus pulling, pulling.
pulling and calling out. That whisper wasn't your conscience. That whisper was Jesus, his Holy Spirit calling out to you, calling you into a place of change, calling you out of a place of dysfunction into a place of function. It is time. Romans 6, 4b says this, just as Christ was raised from the dead, Resurrection Sunday, y'all, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. I don't know about you guys, but that's exciting to me. The fact that every day when I get up, I can live a new life. Not because of anything I've done, but because Jesus did all that had to be done. Let me read that again, because this is what Resurrection Sunday is truly about. Romans 6, 4b says, Just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, do this with me, say, we too. We too. If you're at home, go, we too. We too may live a new life. When Jesus rose from death to life, he immediately opened up that opportunity for you and for me to walk into the new. It is time to step into the new. Well, why again? Why? Why? Because in him, all things are new. All things are new. Again, it doesn't matter where you were or who you are or what you've been doing. All things are new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us that therefore, if anyone, you heard that? Anyone. Anyone. I don't care who you are. Anyone is in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Where's the new? Here. That was good. Where's the new? Here. I had to do it one more time because I really like that. The old has gone and the new is here. here. <laughs> it's here. It's not some far off place. It's here. It's right there on your phone. It's right there where you're watching from. The things of the older past. Isaiah 43 puts it this way. He says, forget the former things. Forget the former things, he says in Isaiah 43. Why does he tell us to forget the former things? Very simple. He says, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing. God says, I am doing a new thing. And now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is about to make a way where you thought there was no way. I love that song that we sung in worship, that he's the way maker. He's making ways. It's time to step into the new. Jesus opened up a new way of living. In John 10.10, 10, he says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said that he came that we might have life and have it abundantly. My testimony is kind of crazy. Um, not everybody knows this who's watching this, but 20 years ago, I was in a place where, quite frankly, everything was going good. I was in law school. I was studying. I had met my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, the love of my life. But I got to tell you that even though everything was going good, you know, I was having fun. I was doing all the things you can imagine and having fun. But every single time I would come home, I would find myself empty. Until the day that I made the decision to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I sound so religious, Pastor JJ. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. If we're going to be stepping into the new, one, we need to recognize it. Two, we need to embrace it. And then we just need to go all into it. And that new is Jesus. So I just want to close off by talking to you. Maybe you're joining us. Well, I know you're joining us for the first time ever online, but maybe it's the first time you've ever shared with us in a group or any other uh, scenario. But I want to speak to you. If you can recognize that you're in a place right now where things have not been working, and you're seeking for something new. 
you have to know that Jesus is that new. And it's real simple. You're real simple. How, how, how do I get to walk into that new, JJ? How do I get to do that? I hear you. I feel you. But how do I do that? It's real simple. The Word of God tells us all we got to do is the following. Believe in your heart that Jesus was the Son of God, that he died, and just like today we celebrate his resurrection, he rose again. If you can believe that in your heart and speak that out with your mouth, you will have the opportunity to be called a child of God, and you can step into that new. So what am I going to do? I, I'm going to, I want to guide you. I want to lead you right now in this time, okay? Because it's not about me. I've done this. I found my peace. I've come to know Jesus in spite of the craziness that I used to live. But I want to guide you right now. If you want to step into the new, if you recognize that this is the perfect moment, that this man, this came right on time, okay? If that is you, I want you to say this prayer after me. My wife and kids, they're going to join along with me. But I want you to repeat this prayer. Just say something like this. Just say, thank you, Lord, for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and to be the payment of my sins. You already paid the price. And Jesus, today I ask that you would forgive me. And I tell you that I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Guys, I want to thank you for joining our first ever online service. But I want to speak to you specifically. If you just said that prayer, believing that Jesus is now your Lord and Savior, and maybe you've got a lot of questions. We want to be there for you. We want to help you go and, and walk through all those questions that you might have. The only way we can know that is if you link up with us. So send us a comment, connect to our social media, send us a direct message right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Send us a message right after this broadcast so that we can immediately start to link up with you, pray with you, and encourage you in your new walk. We want to thank you for tuning in. If you liked it, share this message so that somebody else might be blessed. We love you. Welcome to Thrive. God bless you. Stay safe and keep on Thrive Living. We love you. God bless. Until next time. I wanted to share one last word with you. And that is, we're in a season right now where we've just recently launched Thrive Church. And as a church, we understand that God is a God of generosity. I mean, he did, in fact, give his only son for us. But we also are not insensitive to the fact that as this message is being aired, many of us are going through financial difficulties. But I wanted to let you know, if you are in a position and you feel stirred in your heart to support this ministry and our new project, Thrive Church, we'd love for you to join us, partner up with us, and show how God's generosity can do a lot of things in this season. We love you guys. We encourage you to give with a generous heart. You can do it by going to our webpage clicking on the donate button or you can also text to give by texting 84321 thank you for tuning in we pray that that last message was a blessing for you and for your life and if it was do us a favor we'd love to bless somebody else because you can reach somebody that we can never reach we'd love for you to take that video go ahead and like it share it comment below and share it everywhere you can if you're not already connected up with all of our social media, go up to our webpage, www.thriveliving.org. Message us there. Link up to all of our social media outlets so you can stay tuned to everything that's going on.